Welcome back to another Our Walking Christ live stream. These are recorded Thursdays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to come all around and watch it live, interact with the comment feeds. Today we're going to be talking about climate change and the Christian. What does the Bible have to say? And this is kind of inspired on there was a apologetics um, conference or group or something going on having to do with the RZIM Foundation. That's Ravi Zacharias International Ministries, and they answered several different questions. And one of them was on climate change, and they completely missed the boat on that, and they completely missed the boat on something else. We're going to examine those and then see what the Bible actually has to say about any of this type of topic. So hold down, buckle down, and uh, understand that, that the end is nigh. The end is nigh. If ever there were a time we need to be out there and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and handing out our Bibles, it is now because the world is going to end and we're going to learn today that a mass extinction is coming, etc., etc., etc. And uh, <laughs> wow, interesting. So let's go ahead and uh, dive on into some of the articles here for the day. So I'm going to start with this one from USA Today. So what happened here is within the last couple weeks, there was this big, you know, climate change school strike and all of these students were leaving their classes and, and not going to school and engaging in, in protests around the world for climate change because the end is nigh. If you watch some of these clips of some of these people, you get a chance to see what our future, the, the future of our nation, and it's a scary place. But anyway, um, this is being launched out and pushed forth and mostly being head up by what's interesting is there's a lot of kind of creepy, scary background stuff that I'm not going to dive into here. But mostly this boils down to this woman here uh, who is a 16-year-old child from uh, Sweden, I believe whose parents are involved in acting and in television, which is somewhat significant because this is kind of like an interesting act. And they have told her from a very early age that the world is going to end because we are destroying the environment. And so now she's going around to all of the countries. And my understanding is even filed lawsuits against all of the top polluters, except China, the number one polluter. And she had this to say in front of the UN nation, and uh, this is definitely an interesting clip. I'm pulling this one from, looks like, Sky News. So hopefully we'll be okay using this. But have a look at this. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering, people are dying, entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money. Okay, so we're going to stop there. There is so much in that, what is that, 30 seconds or less. So she's talking about... First, you can see that this is over dramatized. Now, this child went through serious depression over the fact that the world was going to end because her parents fed it to her. Because of this, she experienced a lot of, uh, she even developed an eating disorder, which is why she still looks like a 12 year old. She's really 16. And it's very over dramatic. She, she's talking about like, like entire ecosystems are collapsing and we're on the beginning of a mass extinction. I'm sorry, I have missed the beginning of the mass extinction. I haven't seen any evidence of a mass extinction. Nor have I seen any evidence of entire ecosystems simply collapsing. This is insanity. And just an FYI, guys, back in the 70s, if you find the Time Magazine, I forget exactly what year and what month it was, Time Magazine, cover of Time Magazine, another ice age is coming. Another ice age is coming, people. And then, of course, it all flipped around. Now it's global warming. Now they just call it climate change because they don't know what it's doing. I got a reminder for you guys, particularly you younger people who were not alive. In the 1970s, Lake Erie caught on fire because it was so full of oil and waste and pollution. And the water is completely not flammable anymore because it's in a lot better shape. 
If you live your entire life isolated inside of a giant city structure and you've never seen a tree in its natural habitat, you seem to think that the whole world is going to be ending. Like the whole world is like a giant city or something. You have never been out west in the United States. You've never been to a forest. You've never had to swat away the mosquitoes. Guys, our planet is so much better shape than it was then. Now, do we have to do our part? Absolutely, we have to do our part to, we don't want to be excessively wasteful, but here is a person who is, of course, she's taking boats, but of course, all the support staff is taking airplanes and all these things going around the world. She is just going to all these different places. I have a question for you. What is your electric bill? How much power are you consuming? Are you leaving more lights off? Are you going without air conditioning? Are you utilizing disposable products and just throwing them away? Are you using a little bag to the grocery store? There's so many little things that we can do, but it's not nearly as critical as this girl is trying to say. But this is a giant act. And of course, this person is set up because nobody can come through and criticize this person. Because to criticize this person, you are just, you're just attacking a child. No, I'm not. I'm attacking the child's message. See, if this were such a critical deal, we'd have a lot of highly credible scientists on the forefront talking about it. But why is it all we're seeing is children and politicians? The only people who see talking about this, children and politicians. And what we see in this climate change strike, if you go through and watch some of the clips of some of these speeches that these young people have been giving, they are literally buying into the talking points of this Green New Deal, which is total and utter nonsense. Complete nonsense. But in the midst of all of this, we had this question come through and was answered by a group put on by RZIM. And this made me scratch my head and question, is RZIM starting to slip into insanity? So this is from the Christian Post. Or how as Christians can we react to the climate crisis? Interesting. Have a listen to this answer, though, because this answer is quite fascinating. A question brought brought partly in response to a wave of recent protests demanding action on climate change. The question on a Christian response to the climate action was given by Musha. Musha said, human beings have not been good stewards of the earth, end quote. The assertion that Christians are, quote, are not supposed to see climate crisis as something separate from our faith, end quote. She says, personally, I, he or she, I think this is a he actually, personally, I can live without my faith in Jesus Christ in the direction of the environment by making adjustments, by showing myself to be a good steward of the environment. This world belongs to God and he has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to redeem it and create a new humanity. He focused on this world and he enlists us as Christians, as believers, to do our part to work with him as he fixes it. Total and utter nonsense. This is so theologically wrong, it makes me want to question if I ever want to listen to anything out of RZIM again in the rest of my life. I probably will, by the way. But this will open up a very critical eye. There is nothing about his statement that is valid. Nothing. And we're going to dig into the Bible and find out why. Are we ready? All right, so let's go ahead and have a quick look at this. Um, so he says, humans have not been good stewards of the earth. Is this true or is this false? First, what is a steward? So a steward is a person who is in charge. This is something that we don't have stewards as much in our modern vernacular. This is something we saw a lot more in, an, in a uh, more like a medieval period of time. The steward is basically the caretaker. You might think of it as a butler in, in our modern vernacular for a, a rich person would have a butler who is basically in charge of handling all of the things. Are we created as stewards? Yes, we are. From Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 to 30, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Oh, Lord, we're male and female too. All right, who, who would have thunk it? It continues verse 28, but God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and of the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. 
Then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth, and every tree which has fruit yielding its seed, it shall be food for you. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the sky, and to everything that moves on the earth, which has life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. All right, so God took this human that he created, he put him into the garden, and then when he put him into the garden, we are now given this task of managing it. So yes, we are stewards of the earth. Now, have we been good stewards? There's times we have been better. There's times that we have been worse. Overall, here's the bottom line. In the 70s, there was a lot more issues with pollution than we have now. Cleanup in incidences has occurred, and now at least the United States and many other first world nations are a lot cleaner than they were. Except one of the things that has caused a problematic thing is we have allowed excessive consumerism to bust into the world. Now, I actually wrote a book on consumerism, and it was my book, Happy Holidays. This book mostly is focused on holidays, but how consumerism how consumerism has ruined the holidays specifically. So if you want to see a little bit about that, look at that book, Happy Holidays. But the thing about consumerism that we have all messed up is nearly everything we have now is disposable. Like, I still use an old double-edged straight razor that is completely non-wasteful at all. But are you getting disposable razors you're throwing out around massive chunks of plastic every time? Think about that. Are you using canvas bags or are you using the plastic bags at the shop, at the supermarkets? Think about these types of things. But at the same token, we're not here to fix this world. And that's what I want to get into this next part here. And I'm trying to wrap my head around this, this second part that he says. Personally, this is the speaker saying, personally, I can live out my faith in Jesus Christ in the direction of the environment by making adjustments, by showing myself as a good steward of the environment. Let me tell you something. It is not our task to be a good steward of the environment specifically. That is a, it is not a primary task. It is a secondary task. So what does that mean? Well, that means that it's not our requirement to get out there and have the first thing we got to be environmentalists. No, our task as Christians is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is to get out there and save people. Especially if the world's going to end in 12 years anyway. Guys, get out there and preach the gospel because the world's going to end. Y'all think we're going to stop it? <laughs> okay. And I don't believe for a second the world's going to end in, in 10 years. That's something they've been saying for, you know, they've been saying that the world's going to end in 10 years, going back 50, 60, 70, 80 years back. Okay. So with this, he, if you're focusing your Christian life on being a good steward of the environment, that is a, an error. And here is why. His final ultimate point here is so completely and utterly and thoroughly and totally and wrong and completely non-biblical. By the way, I haven't seen a single verse in any of this. He says, the world belongs to God and he sent his son Jesus Christ to redeem it. If you think that he came to redeem this ball back here, you're wrong. You're wrong. God came and Christ came to redeem the elect believers out of this perishing world. And when we have come into this perishing world and we are redeemed out of this perishing world, we have a better world going on to us. It says Christ came to redeem it. No, Christ did not come to redeem this world. Christ came to redeem elect souls out of the sinful and fallen world. That's what Christ came to do. It says he focused, Christ focused on this world and enlists us as Christians, as believers, to do our part to work with him as he fixes it. Complete and utter balderdash! Let me prove that to you. This is not difficult. Flip your Bible on back to the very end. I know most people start reading the Bible and never quite get to the very end. But flip your Bible back to the end. And we're going to have a look at uh, 2 Peter. And we're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 3. 
We're going to pick up in verse 10. We're going to read verses 10 through 13. Are you ready? The day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens, that means this ball right here, that is the whole thing. This heavens will pass away with a roar. The elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burnt up. Since all these things are to be destroyed in the way, what sort of people ought you be holy in conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Did Jesus come to save the planet? No. I'm sorry. This is Christianity 101. The earth was reserved for fire. All that we have right here will be burnt away. The elements will be destroyed. Everything will be consumed. Everything that will be remaining is only those souls that are redeemed through the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we think we're going to save the planet, y'all got another thing coming because God has willed this planet is going to be destroyed. Now, does that mean that we get out and we just make do our part? Let's all buy our Hummers and fill them full of gas and just crank on the fuel. No, because we are stewards. It is our task to make the planet last as long as it can, which is why you need to be doing away with disposable products. You need to be using your canvas shopping bags. You need to be turning off your lights. You need to be cutting back your electric bill. You need to be doing things that increase sustainability. But if you want to cast aside times of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to focus on saving this ball back here that is reserved for fire, you'll got another thing coming because you're now kicking against the goads. Because God has determined that this thing is going down. This thing is going down. So that's kind of my message today. Our task is is to be holy and upright in this coming world, to get out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to understand the scriptures, to know the depth of sin in our life. That is our task. We need to do our part, yes, but it's only a secondary measure because our primary measure is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and live a holy and upright life. That is my final thought. That is my final take-home message. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.